Good morning, First Baptist Aztec, and thank you for joining us in person or online. I'm Beth, and I'm so glad you decided to spend your Sunday morning with us. If this is your first time here, Pastor Mike would like to meet you outside the north doorway after service, where you will receive your favorite soda, candy bar, and a gift. Before we get started with worship, here's some of the things happening at First Baptist Aztec. Senior adults, are you 55 or over? Join us Thursday, May 19th at 11.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall for a time of lunch and fellowship. After lunch, there is an opportunity to engage in some ministry work together for our church and community. Come out for a great time of fun, food, and fellowship. The next Men's Breakfast Fellowship is Saturday, May 21st at 7.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Ladies, we will start a Ladies' Breakfast Fellowship the same day at 9 a.m. in the Student Ministry Building. Students in the ninth grade or higher are welcome to come on their own, and those younger can come with their parent. We look forward to seeing you. On May 22nd, we will have a parent-child dedication service in both morning services. This is a time for parents to commit to God and the church to raise their child under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If your child is between newborn and fifth grade and has not yet participated in a child dedication service, please contact Crystal in the church office at 334-6833. Start of Summer Sizzle Spectacular is coming. Join us for this exciting event on June 5th where you will have the opportunity to check out our ministries and find out how you can be involved and how we can serve you. Outdoor worship will start at 8.30 a.m and all Sunday school classes will meet at 10.15 a.m. Lunch, games, and the ministry fair will start at 12 noon. There's a chance that you could win a free lunch. You don't want to miss it. That's it for this week's announcements. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at firstaztec.org and on social media. We believe God has something to say to you, and our hope is that you feel his love stronger than ever before. You picked a great day to be here, and welcome home. Good morning. Are we all excited to worship the Lord this morning? Yes. Amen. Thank you for that, Rex. <laughs> all right. So can you guys be gracious and um, share your smile to the person on your left and your, on your right and say, I'm excited to see you today. I'm excited. Yay. <laughs> All right, so we were going to worship the Lord this morning. Let's all stand up. And if you guys have not greeted Deborah for her birthday last Friday, you can still text her or you can say, Happy birthday, Deborah! Happy birthday, Debbie! We missed you a bit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, let's worship the Lord this morning. Let's give him all the praise that he deserves. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Good morning, good morning. Um, this morning, I'll be doing the scripture reading, and we're going to read from the 20, 26th chap, 16th chapter of Psalms. Let me know when you got it. <laughs> if not, just read on from another person, as Pastor would say. Preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good beside you. As for the saints who are in the earth, they are the majestic ones in whom all are of my delight. The sorrows of those who have bartered for another God will be multiplied. I will not pour out their drink offerings of blood, nor, I, nor will I take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my portion of my inheritance and my cup. You support my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. I have set the Lord continually before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will dwell secu securely. For you will not abandon my soul to Shiloh, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand, there are pleasures forever. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, <laughs> the Savior that brings joy, Lord God. We put our salvation in you, God, because you are the God that brings understanding, Lord God, of what we may encounter, Lord God, of what seasons and valleys and high mountain tops we may encounter, Lord God. We put that in you, Lord God, because we can, we can trust you, Lord God. That even in those changing times and scenes of our life that we don't find understanding, Lord God. Help us to be able to, to look to you in those times and be willing to give you the praises and glory that you deserve, Lord God. And Lord God, as we move forward, Lord God, in uplifting your name, Lord God, the name above all names. Lord God, I pray that you will just allow us to open up our hearts, Lord God, to give you the praise that you deserve, Lord God. And I pray that you will just flow through these worshipers, Lord God, this morning, Lord God, as they reach the throne room of heaven, Lord God. And Lord God, as the word is brought forth, Lord God, let it be, let it be a timely word, Lord God, that we all need, Lord God. A time that we, we will be willing to examine our walk with you, Lord God. Just flow through Brother Mike this morning, Lord God. And help us as believers, Lord God, as a body of Christ, to be the ones that are accountable for our own walk, Lord God. To make the changes that we need going forth, Lord God. Lord God, be within this time, Lord God. Help us to be the change of this generation, Lord God. To be disciples of your light in this dark world. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Farron. We're going to be singing about Days of Elijah. Are you guys familiar with this song? Okay, so I'm expecting that everybody will worship with us tonight. Amen? Amen. These are the days of Elijah. Right. 
the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Amen.
God, we wait your coming soon. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. God we thank you for your promise Lord that all these things that we're doing is a preparation for your coming God and we thank you Lord for we are continually holding on to your promise that you will come and you will come and get us oh God so we can do this we can worship you we can sing all the praises that you deserve right there right there in front of you God beholding your glory your greatness and your majesty and God give us give us the patience to wait for you to wait on your coming and we thank you for you continually calling you're continually calling back the sinners and even waking up the saints That all these, all these things are in preparation for your coming. The greatest day of all. That we can finally see you face to face. Our Savior. Our God. Our King. And we thank you, God. We thank you that you... You're touching every life and you're, you're always speaking to us to be patient. To shine, to shine Jesus in each and every day. To be the light, to be the salt so the others can experience this as well can experience the fullness of joy, the peace in your presence. And as we continue to wait upon you, God, as we continue to wait upon your coming, we will not grow weary in singing, in worshiping, even if there will be a thousand and thousands of hallelujahs that we will still sing oh God help us Lord help us to be ready help us to be ready every day and we will continue to sing worship and praises not just every Sunday Lord but every day God We'll continue to sing thousands and thousands of hallelujahs. Amen. Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine Perhaps creation longs to have the words to say But this joy is mine With a thousand hallelujahs We magnify your name
It is so good to be home. It's so good to be here to worship with you, to sing songs of praise to our God. Nothing like being home, amen? I am uh, very, very thankful for the time away with family. Uh, thank you, church, for giving me that freedom. These days have been vital. Uh, for our family, they have. Um, it was, it was vital that I was there. Um, your patience with me has been greatly appreciated, and it's going to be needed in the future. Um, I don't know who was praying against the prayer that I sent out for my mom, but she's still alive. So, um, she. <laughs> so I'm going to be. Uh, at some point, making a trip back, she, her kidneys are functioning again. Um, they're normal level for her. Her respiratory system is good. She's on four and a half liters of oxygen, flowing freely. Um, she's still in the hospital, going to be in the hospital for at least another week. So uh, there's an update on her. The child that tried to play Humpty Dumpty, um, she is doing fine. They can still tell that the head is tender. Uh, but she's doing well. The child that dropped the Humpty Dumpty baby um, is probably in worse shape. <laughs> so uh, appreciate your prayers for all that. Cindy's family, um, appreciate you guys' prayers as uh, they had a, a very, um, just a, a very strong person in their family, Cindy's side of the family, uh, go home to heaven. And uh, they're still grieving and processing all of that. And uh, our daughter and her family in Houston are coping and dealing with trauma and turmoil. And much prayer is needed and can ask that you would continue to pray with us there. And uh, again, it is awesome to have a church family and be able to do life with you guys. Um. I know that people find people to do life with in bars. I know that. Um, been there, done that. Uh, not like, it's not like this. It just isn't. Um, we have hope. We have one another. And, uh, man, I just appreciate you guys so much walking with Cindy and I and our families. So thank you. Love you. Turn in your Bible, if you would, to James chapter 5. So we turn our hearts to today's message. We're going to be discussing patience. Oh, some of you chuckled maniacally right there, and some of you groaned. I heard those groans. Uh, patience. The, the, today's title of... Uh, Today's message is, how is our patience? And I, what I thought was going to be a one Sunday message, uh, I was working on this message when we left uh, for Houston. And, and by the way, sidebar, if you guys didn't know, there's a little bit of humidity in Houston. It's like you walk from refrigerated air into a sauna. Refrigerated air, sauna. And when you get out of the shower, you're still wet. It doesn't matter. I mean, I just, it just, it's a continual, yeah, a continual yuck. How about that? It, wow. It, good to be home on so many levels. It, just saying. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't even know where that came from or where I was. But uh, oh, one Sunday. 
when I was working on this message, it was going to be a one Sunday message, had three very neat points and everything was cool. And I came back uh, Friday about one and came to the office and looked at my message and I went, well, that's not one message, I think that's three. And, and it ended up being three and then after the first service, we actually have four because today's too long to go one. So we have got four, me- four weeks of patience, hallelujah. Isn't that great? I know that you all are excited about that. I can see it on your faces. I can hear it in your voices. Do not skip. We've got someone taking role right now, and if you're not here next Sunday, we will come get you, all right? So uh, what we're going to be looking at is today is how is your patience in waiting for the Lord's return? It's actually two parts, this week and next Sunday, same thing. Then the one after that is going to be, how is your patience with people? It's right there in the text. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not reading your mail. I have not been to your house. (laughs) And then the next week, the fourth week, Lord willing, is how is your patience with your words? Don't skip. It's going to be good. I've heard, and you have probably heard as well, a a tongue-in-cheek statement uh, that says, whatever you do, don't pray for patience. Have you heard that? It's it's meant to have levity. It's meant to be uh, humorous. it's, it's, It's meant to be funny because the inference is, man, if you pray for patience, God's going to put you through the ringer and you're going to have so many rough things to go through to learn patience. And we say that, you may have said that before, and we've heard that phrase. If you haven't said it, you've at least probably heard it. But I want us to process patience, not on a jesting level, but I want us to process patience on a level of truth with the Bible as our foundation. My friends, God will never do anything to bring you great harm. He will only do what he knows is best and right and what his perfect wisdom allows. You see, God's character is one that is good, one that is loving, faithful, and God cannot operate outside his character. That's a good point for an amen. A hallelujah, a run around the church or something. I'm just saying. Because that's truth. God cannot operate outside his character. So when bad things do come our way, did God allow them? Absolutely yes. Now, Can I use the word stupid? Is that okay? You and I can do stupid things that have huge repercussions on our lives. Okay, all right. We'll have an altar call right now, right? Take up an offering, do something. Yeah, absolutely. But when God... God brings something into our lives, it is meant for good. If, if you and I will allow God to have it and to use it. Could God stop bad things from happening to us forever? Absolutely yes, he's God. The sovereignty of God is perfect. And if you don't understand the the term sovereignty, it means the perfectness of God. There is nothing beyond God's control. There is nothing beyond God's ability. Nothing. However, if God interfered with everything that came our way, how would we grow? It would be like that parent 
of that young child or elementary school child or in some cases even into the teenage years that rescues their children every time something doesn't go that child's way. I believe the term is called helicopter parents. Where's my, where's my public school teachers for an amen? I mean, come on. <laughs> if you don't know that term, helicopter parents, it's whenever a child does poorly in school, they get the grade they deserve, and the parent comes flying in and lowers a rope and repels down guns blazing at the teacher in, in trying to defend their child who got what they deserved from that mean, mean teacher. If God was a helicopter God, what would you and I ever learn? So I want us to see James chapter 5, verse 7. If you got it, say, I got it. Oh, perfect. Be patient. There's the first time it's used. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. Wow. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop patiently. There's that word again. Patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, there's that word, be patient and stand firm. Because the Lord's coming is near. Hallelujah. And then he tacks this on all with that same thought. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you'll be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Wow. Would you pray with me? And when one person prays, who prays? We all pray. This is not a time to put your mind in neutral. This is a time to seek the Father together. Lord, what would it be like if, if you sent your son to come back and get us right now? be talking to you, then talking to you face to face. Oh, what a great moment that would be. God, use your word. Speak to us, please. Teach us that patience is not something to be afraid of or scared of, but something to embrace. And teach us, O oh God, today to be waiting in, in expectation for your return. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you and I will surrender what God brings our way or what we do out of our own ignorance, if we will surrender those things to God and allow him to walk with us and to work through us, great things can happen. Do you realize that a beautiful butterfly was once a worm. Butterflies begin as what is called a caterpillar. It's a, it's a worm-like bug with a whole lot of legs. And what it does is it eats and eats and eats and eats and eats and eats and eats. And eats. Nothing wrong with that, right? And it, it, it creates this energy inside of it to build a, 
like a cocoon. Uh, and inside that cocoon, the caterpillar, the worm changes. And eventually it comes out as a butterfly. This process is known as a metamorphosis. Did you know that this process, from the time the caterpillar goes into its cocoon, that it takes about 10 to 14 days, and some will say even as long as three weeks on average, for that butterfly to come out. And it depends on, I've done some reading on this, it's quite fascinating. It, depending on the weather, if there's not enough humidity, like New Mexico, that caterpillar can actually stay in that cocoon for up to three years. Building, molding, and trying to break out. We have a video that I found fascinating, and I want us to watch this video of a butterfly, a butterfly's process, please. Watch his wings. Look at that. beauty of God's creation. Amen? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that fascinating? I love that. Did you know, and people have done this as scientific studies, that if you pull that cocoon off and you cut it open and you bring the butterfly out, that the butterfly dies? It has to go through that process, painful process, they feel, of being stuck inside there and slowly working its way out day after day after day, week after week, so that it can fulfill its intended purpose that God made it for. What's my point? We are allowed to go through things in our lives that make us more usable for God's kingdom. God allows things to enter our lives, difficulties, trials, hard times, so that you and I become more refined. So that you and I become into a greater image of His Son, Jesus Christ. You and I go through things in life that you and I would term junk, just yuck. And God is allowing us to go through those things so that we know how to comfort people who go through the same thing in our lives that God allows to come into our lives. We know in a fresh way once we have been in certain situations how to, how to speak with compassion because we have been there or been in really close circumstances to what they have 
what they are going through. It's one thing to hear about it. It's another thing to actually walk through it. And God in his sovereignty knows that our lives on this earth are brief. Very, very brief. God looks at our lives and you go, wow, you're, you, you live to the life of 80. You live to the life of, of, of 73, which is I think still the average age life expectancy, and we go, wow, that's, that's a long time. No, it's not. And the closer you get to that age, the shorter that is. And God sees from eternity. And what you and I go through as we are patient and waiting for the Lord's return. As we are patient with people, as we are patient with our words, God allows us to have that as part of our crown that we will receive in heaven, that we will lay before the feet of our Savior one day. And as you, you and I, as we walk through stuff in our lives all of and we 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 give it to God and we 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 respond to it in the way that would honor God and and a way that would bring glory to God we and we use these things in our lives one day we will get to lay all of that at the feet of Jesus and praise him and thank him for the opportunity you see my friends patience is not a bad thing Patience is not a a negative thing. Patience is one of the fruit that the Spirit of God works in our lives. And if you and I sit back and go, whoa, I don't want patience, you know what we're saying? We don't want the fullness of the Spirit of God working in our lives. Can I take that a step further? If we say, whoa, I don't want to learn patience, I don't want to build patience in my life. We are actually squelching the power of God that he wants to work in us and through us. Else why would it be one of the fruit of the Spirit? The book of Galatians, right? The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience. It's right there. So patience is actually a wonderful thing to develop. Let me give us some synonyms for the word patience. We're going to be processing patience four weeks, counting today, Lord willing, and it's not longer. Uh, We have to be patient with this, right? Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really thought it was going to be one sermon and done. Synonyms for the word patience, fortitude, perseverance. And if you remember from James chapter 1, he used that word perseverance so many times. And he's still using it in in chapter 5. Another word, another synonym, forbearance, persistence, dedication, And I'm going to include this one, a synonym for patience, discipline. And you might go, well, wait, 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 wait. How can you get discipline from patience? Well, I've had someone say to me in years past, man, that whole going to the gym thing, it just didn't work for me. Man, I tried and tried, and it, I just never saw any difference. Oh, really? Man, how long did you go? Well, it was about a week off and on. Where was the discipline in that? 
Where was that discipline of going every day, setting your alarm, getting up, making it happen? Discipline and patience in the process. Am I making sense? Patience is a very valuable trait. And if you and I discard patience, we are truly discarding a huge part of what God wants in and through our lives. Verse 7, he tells us, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. Until the Lord's return. Well, some of your translations may say long suffering or do not grow weary. I want us to hold our place there in uh, James 5, and I'd like for you to join me by turning to Matthew 24. Please. I know Steve, boy, Steve Ballou, he did a great job. I joined you guys in both weeks. Uh, and sometimes, because I, I was in a Sunday school class when the first. Uh, when one of the services was happening and blah, blah, blah. So I couldn't hear anything, but I watched and I got to hear some here and there and watch it. Steve did a great job and I really appreciate Steve Ballou being here to preach uh, in my absence those two weeks. He's a very busy man and I appreciate his time being here, but he spoiled you. I think he threw a lot of scriptures up on the screen, didn't he? Yeah, we open your Bibles. <laughs> Patiently find the books of the Bible, all right? There was that word patient again. Yes. All right. Matthew chapter 24, if you got it, say, I got it. Verse 1, Jesus left the temple. Now, we're talking about Jesus. This is Jesus here, and we're going to be hearing Jesus. We're going to be hearing and reading Jesus talk about his return, his second coming. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked? Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign, watch what they say, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? You see, those disciples knew that Jesus would come back, didn't they? Wow. I mean, it's, it's amazing how they kind of ebbed and flowed as the Spirit moved. And here they, they must have known because of the way they asked the question. Verse 4, Jesus' response, Watch out that no one deceives you. Now, my friends, that is powerful in itself. Matter of fact, I, I may make that a scripture a memory, a scripture memory. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. So much there to process and think about. Verse 5, for many will come in my name, calling, claiming, I am the Messiah and will deceive many. Now, in your lifetime, have you heard that happen? Me too, several times. And if you haven't, it's because you're not very old or you haven't been listening and looking, all right? I just say it because it's, it's been there so many times in my lifetime. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Whoa, don't read past that. I had a friend call me the other day. We visited for a bit. He said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. A little concerned about a lot of things. I said, okay, what is it? He said, well, there's, you know, there's this war going on and uh, Russia has attacked uh, Ukraine. All these people are dying. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, China, and China, it, 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 I'm hearing, he said, I'm hearing that China is going to take over Taiwan. I said, okay. And he said, and then, and then I'm hearing that Russia is talking about invading all of Europe. Okay. Well, do, 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 we need to, 
Do we need to plant, get, get all of our people together and buy some land and plant this huge garden so we can eat when all the food is gone? Now, I'm not against gardens. And I'm not against preparing and being prepared. I'm not. But I think Jesus' words are very important. You, you see what he said? But see to it that you are not, what was it? See to it that you're not scared. See to it that you're, you're not just sitting back full of anxiety and you're being all anxious and all wrapped up going, ah! Because the world, the lost world wants us to act that way. The lost world wants us to be alarmed. The lost world wants us to be scared. And Jesus said, hey, guys, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, don't be alarmed. Basically, I'm still on my throne. I've got you and I've got this. Basically, don't, don't be worried. Don't be full of anxiety. Such things, Jesus continued, must happen. But the end is still to come. In other words, things are just getting warmed up. Nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you'll be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith. Did you hear that? And will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increased wickedness, that's important right there, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And to this, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. And James is saying, hey, be patient while you're waiting for Jesus to come back. Be patient. And then scroll down to verse 22. If you got it, say, I got it. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. And then I want you to scroll down, if you would, to verse 36. Jesus is still the one talking. And Jesus says, but about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood... People were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Wow. If the coming of the Lord, if James is encouraging us to be patient in waiting for the Lord's return, and Jesus, our Lord, is saying, hey, it's going to be like the days of Noah. We need to pause and take a look at the days of Noah for just a moment. Turn with me, if you would, to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, and I want you to go down, if you would, please, to verse 5. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. If you got it, say, I got it. Well, that's a good number of you. 
Cooch, you're getting fast, brother. Good job. I heard you. Verse 5, the, Lord, the Word of God reads, The Lord saw, so God saw, how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth. Now, Jesus said in his own teaching, it will be like the days of Noah. Amen? And then he says, it, it says here in, in, in verse 5 of chapter 6 of Genesis, the wickedness of the human race had become great on the earth. Who is the human race? Wow, we need to be careful, don't we? We need to be careful and make sure we're doing some introspection and not busy just pointing fingers because it's a whole lot easier to see someone else's sin than it is to see our own. Amen? Maybe that's why Jesus said that little bit about, hey, before you go pulling the speck out of someone else's eye, make sure you address the what? That big plank, that log in your own eye. What a powerful word picture Jesus painted there. So before we started pointing fingers, it says it'll be like the days of Noah. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth. And that every inclination of the thoughts of the human race was only evil all the time. Wow. Now, let's process this for just a moment. I'm going to talk about something that some of you all may be really tired of hearing about because it's been talked about so much for the at least last eight weeks that I can think of. And it might be something that someone might want to point a finger at, but I'm challenging you not to and to remember your own heart. It seems the abortion discussion has come to an agreement that life begins at conception. The people that are against abortion and the people that are for abortion, it seems that they have actually come to a piece of level ground and the, those that are against abortion have always said that life begins at conception, but those that have been for abortion have denied that that's when life began, but if I'm understanding things, what I'm reading, the majority of the people that are for abortion have actually conceded that science says life begins at conception. But that same group of people that are still for abortion, even though they're saying life begins at conception, are now pointing and saying, well, you know, if the mom and or dad don't have a certain income level, then that baby just, that child just needs to go away. Oh, it's being said, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't read it, it's, it's there and it's actually on the front burner of what's happening. And remember, we're talking about the wickedness that is prevalent. It seems that this common ground that has been found is now saying, yeah, sure, life begins at conception, but if that baby, if it doesn't look like that baby uh, would have a certain quality of life or might have to live a life of poverty, that life just needs to end. With the U.S. Supreme Court soon to be releasing a decision on abortion being legal at any time during a pregnancy, we might scratch our heads and think, well, how much worse can this get? 
Jesus said it would be like the days of Noah. And in the days of Noah, wickedness in the human race was rampant. And every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The abortion, the, those, that are, uh, uh, those that are against abortion and those that are for abortion have also found another piece of level ground in which they agree. You see, scientists have proven that the mom's DNA and the baby's DNA are different. You've got a mom and you've got a baby inside that mama's belly, and that baby has a total different DNA. The DNA doesn't happen when they come out the birth canal and say, ta-da. The DNA happens in the womb. And these two sides, the, those that are absolutely against abortion and those that are for abortion, have basically agreed, yeah, the DNA is different. Science says it is. And it comes down to a matter of convenience. Well, that child is just going to be inconvenient for that mom and for that dad. And so they need to kill what's inside of it. Now pause with me for just a moment. Because I know the statistics and I'm familiar with the numbers. And in this room, chances are really, really high that we have more than two or three people who have had an abortion. And here's what I want you to know. That God loves you. And that Romans 8, 1 is yours. You say, well, I don't know what Romans 8, 1 says. Well, listen. Romans 8, 1 says this. Therefore now, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And if you are a son or a daughter of God, and you have been a part of an abortion, there is no condemnation for you. God does not look at you and hate you. The blood of Christ covers that sin the same as the sin of lust. The same as the sin of eating too much. God doesn't look at someone that has a sin of gluttony and say, I hate them. God doesn't look at the person, the Christian, that has a gambling uh, sin in their life a gambling hang-up in their life, and say, I hate them until they get rid of that sin. That is not our God. Nor does he hate the person who has had an abortion. But I'll tell you what our God is doing. He is opening his arms, and he is waiting for that person who's had the abortion to run into his arms and to admit the sin and to ask forgiveness. And that, that forgiveness will be poured out, lathered out, smothered out upon that lady and or upon that man. In the Old Testament, we see at least two gods that people in the Old Testament were offering as sacrifices their babies or their children, the gods of Baal and the gods of Molech. There may be more, but I know of those two. Could it be that these same two evil spirits that represent the God of Baal and the God of Molech, could it be these two same evil spirits that were worshipped in the Old Testament thousands and thousands of years ago are the same evil spirits that are constantly saying abortion is okay, killing children is okay, killing babies is okay. Because it is evil 
and wickedness that causes this. I say yes, it absolutely is. The same evil spirits prompting the abortion fight today. You say, well, what can we do about that? We can pray against it. And we can offer light to those who are walking in that darkness. Whether they are followers of Christ or they're not yet followers of Christ. But let's deal with one more piece of wickedness that is so prevalent today and was so prevalent in the time of Noah as well. Homosexuality. This is men having sex with men and women having sex with women. Remember, it said, Jesus said, it will be like the days of Noah when the Lord returns, when he returns. And we see in Genesis 6, in the days of Noah, how great the wickedness was of the human race and every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. My friends, when it comes to being patient regarding the Lord's return and we look at the wickedness that is happening with homosexuality and we look at the wickedness that is happening of teaching preschoolers kindergartners, children, and teenagers that they need to figure out what gender they are so that they know what to do with their bodies. And we scratch our heads at the statements like this and we go, where is the common sense? It will be like the days of Noah. The lost world is attempting to make all of this appear normal. But you and I must look into the word of God and discover truth. That there is male and there is female and that is all that there is. And a man, when, the, when he is married to a woman, lays with the woman and they have sex and God said it is very good. And when a woman grows up and, and, and marries a man that she has, she has sex with, that, with her husband and God says it is very good. There is nothing shameful and there is nothing wrong with that. It's biblical. And the world wants to warp it and make it weird. but I want you to hear me very, very closely. No one, beginning with me, is throwing rocks. Can I pick on you for just a second? I love you. I'm gonna pick on him. I'm gonna use him. He's my friend, he allows me to do this. It would be like if he was struggling with homosexuality and I looked at him and I said, you're gross, yuck. Homosexuality, why would you ever? No way, that's terrible. If he's lost, is he going to follow Christ when I try to share the gospel with him at, when I come on him like that? No. No. He's not going to receive the love of Christ because I have been so mean to him. I can't believe that you paid for your girlfriend to have an abortion. Wow, that's terrible. That's wicked. Is he going to allow me to love on him and his girlfriend after coming down on them like that? No. What's better? Hey, bro, love you. Let's go grab a burger later on, all right? Let's sit down and let's be together. And let's pray together. And let's walk together. And allow the love of God to shine into his life so that he can see that there is hope and that there is healing that is possible. When Christians walk around with a bucket 
and they start pulling rocks out and chunking them at people, the gospel is not heard. There's a barrier, there's a wall that gets erected up and the gospel will be refused at that point. And if people have been that way to you on behalf of the Father in heaven, I am sorry. Because that is not our God. Sometimes Christians stumble and fall, and they are not perfect. And if they have lashed out at you, they have been mean to you, that was wrong of them. That was sin in their life coming out. It was not, they were not being a reflection of the Father. Therefore, now there is no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus. If you stumble and fall, if you walk out these doors and you go into that parking lot, there's parking stops on on the ground on this side. You know what parking stops are, don't you? Those little cement things. If you walk out here in a minute and you trip and fall over one of those parking stops and you find yourself laying on the ground, you have two options laid before you. What is option number one? You could lay there. You've got gravel in your hands. Your glasses are off if you wear glasses. Your, your knees might be bleeding and one of your elbows is probably all sc- scraped up and sore. And you can lay there and you can look at yourself and you can think, man, I was so stupid. I tripped over that parking spot at a stop and here I am laying on the ground and you can lay there and you can cry and you can feel sorry for yourself. That's option one. Do you agree with that? What's option number two? You get up. You get up and you wipe your hands off. You put your glasses back on. Wipe your knees off. And you put a smile on your face and you go, well, I'm going to do my best to never do that again. My friends, sin is the same way. And some of you, as followers of Christ, might find yourself laying on the ground right now, feeling sorry for yourself, mad at yourself that you have fallen, you've committed a sin, and you came to church today just to come to church, but in reality, you're just all mad, and you're sad, and you're right where Satan wants you to be, feeling sorry for yourself. But you know what the father says? Get up and dust yourself off. Come on. What are you thinking? Laying there on the ground? Get up. Let's go. Boom. That's going to sting when I shower. So you have a choice today, Christian, in being patient for the Lord's return. You can choose today to walk out the same way you came in. Or you can choose to get up and say, God, help me to never, ever do that again. That was wrong of me. I wasn't thinking clearly. That was sin. Some of you may need to do that today. If you do, I'm excited for you. Because once you get up and out of that junk, man, there's a whole better world. Some of you today may need to ask Jesus to come into your life for the very first time. Today, you may need to be saved. Today, you may need to tell God, God, I have sinned and I do not deserve to be forgiven, but I'm asking you, As I turn away from my sin, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin, to save me from going to hell, and to be the boss of my life, to take control of my life. God, I surrender it all to you. And if that's you today, I'm excited for you. Because God's brought you here today to get that right. To live with that assurance 
that no matter what happens, there is no condemnation for you because you are in Christ Jesus. I want that for you, but you have to receive it. You have to accept it as a free gift from God, one that you cannot earn, one that you cannot deserve. I, 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 I can never earn my forgiveness. I can never deserve my forgiveness. There's no way. There's no way. But I received it from God as a free gift. Do you need to do that today? Oh, if you do, I'm going to have friends down here on my left. I'm going to have friends right over here on my right. I'll be right here in the middle. And we'll be waiting for you to stand up, step out, and come down and say, Hey, I need, I need to be saved today. I need to become a follower of Jesus. Some of you may need to come and pray with one of us or pray here at the altar and say, God, I've been, I've been laying down in my sin way too long. I'm getting up. Some of you may need to make this place your church home so you have a family to walk with and do life with. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Oh, Father, your timing is going to be perfect for your son Jesus to come back. There's so much more that uh, you're going to lead us to look at next week, and we look forward to that. But Father, would you help us to be patient? Would you help us to be mindful that you're going to send him back real soon? Oh, we see the signs of the days of Noah all around us. Father, help us not to become alarmed, not to be anxious and full of anxiety, scared. You're still sovereign. Father, for those in this room that need to be saved, they need to become a follower of yours, God, I pray that they would be the first ones down. I, I pray for those, O oh Lord God, that have been laying in their sin, that today they choose to get up. They allow one of us to pray with them, encourage them. Father, I pray for those that need to make this their church home, that they too would come down quickly and make that stance. Father, I pray for those that need to get their baptism settled, the baptism on the right side of their salvation. God, I pray that you would move in their hearts and grant them, grant them that steadiness about being obedient to you. And Father, as we respond, we ask that you would be praised because of our response. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? And as you stand, would you come? In Jesus' name, come quickly.
to make sure that song makes sense to you. I want to make room to do, let you do whatever you want to. Do you understand that? Take my circumstances. Take everything. I give it all to you. The good, the bad, the ugly, the yucky. I give it all to you. And I, I make room for you. I make room for you, God, to step in my life and to put all the blocks in order. I give up control of it. That's what you're singing. That is your song of prayer to the Father right now. So as we sing that again, as you sing it out loud, I want you to think about something that you're giving to it. Maybe it's that lack of patience. Maybe it's a lack of focus. You just, you haven't thought about Jesus returning in a long time. Father, forgive us for that. Maybe it's your lack of patience with people or your lack of patience that's shown in your words. As you sing this to him, would you invite him in to deal with it all? Go ahead, lead us in that song. thank you that we can trust you because you will not go away from your character. You will not go away from who you are. Thank you that as your sons and daughters, we don't have buckets of rocks to carry around. We have buckets of grace to pour on people. Buckets of love to pour on people. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And thank you that some of my friends in this room may have dumped their bucket today and ask you to fill it with love. Thank you, Lord, for the reminder of the wickedness, where it comes from, and that you're coming quick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, church family. I love you. Be seated for just a moment, if you would. Um, in just a moment, those seniors that are here, we're going to recognize them and honor them, and you're going to have an opportunity as a church family to love on them. We're, uh, as a church family, we've purchased some Bibles for them. Uh, I'm going to let you be jealous. This is Josiah Hills right here. I'm just going to show you. Oh, come on. Ooh and awe. Look, it's got cheater tabs. And it's, oh, smell of that, would you? Oh, it's that leather. Oh, smell of that right there. It's real. I, it's real. That's right. Ooh, it's real. 
And then uh, all the deacons have signed scripture, a thought, individually to each person. And uh, then their name's all fancy written. I did not do that. Um, inside of it. And so, got to show yours off. Thanks for letting me do that. Um, so we're going to, just to let you know what they are receiving from you. And that is actually the Jeremiah Study Bible. Uh, that should have deserved a little ooh and all as well. As, yeah, yeah, ooh and all. Uh, and then, because Sierra Sanders also graduated from college, and her dad... Uh, checked with me on what kind of Bible, and I said, Jeremiah, study Bible, and he got her one, so instead of that, because she already has one, we got her this, and some of you ladies may already have this, it's called the Beautiful Word Coloring Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, when she comes up, that's what she will be receiving instead of a second one. Uh, she'll, and it's got little pins already in it, coloring pins, yep, 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 yep. So anyway, there's that. Um, when their names come up on the screen, they're going to come and stand here in front. That's your hint. Um, when your name comes up on the screen, you're going to come up and stand. Austin's going to come right over here on this end and uh, bring those Bibles with you. That a boy, good job. Uh, as our student minister, I'm going to ask him to hand him those, those Bibles, and he's going to pray uh, once all the students have, have been are up here that are present today. Um, if you're a guest here with us today, uh, I wanna, I'm going to ask you if you would honor me and honor our church by coming right outside those doors. That's where I'm going to be. We've got some gifts for you that we would love for you to receive. Um, so you come that way. I'd like to get a name and a face together. The church would like to give you the gifts, which I have the pleasure of doing, and uh, would love to just take a moment of your time in that direction. Thank you. Continue to worship by tithing. Uh, there's a tithe box right there, if you're not familiar, back there in that corner and over here. Or, and you can also tithe online. I, I got paid Friday. Um, and God prompted me, because I had pulled up the app uh, on, on my phone to tithe. We tithe online. And uh, God prompted me to turn to Malachi chapter 3. Now, some of you are familiar with that passage. It's, it's, a, it's a tithing passage. It says, will you steal from God and will you steal the tithe? And it goes through and it talks about the protection. And God, I, I don't know why I'm sharing this with you. I just am. But, um, man, God prompted me to pray that passage as a prayer before I tithed. Um, anyway. Do with that with whatever you'd like, just knowledge. But that was part of uh, our worship and prayer before we tithed. Anyway, thank you again for uh, the, your patience, there's that word, with me and allowing me to be gone, uh, to be with my family. Um, I can't express how much that means to both Cindy and I and the importance of it. I could drag you through all the yucky details if you want, but not now. Um, but thank you, and I love you, and Cindy loves you. She is still in Houston. I think I failed to say that earlier. She's still in Houston, and she'll be there for a little bit, all right, as she needs to be, and I've asked her to stay. Um, she needs to be there. Don't forget discipleship classes tonight and uh, Wednesday night as well. And are we ready with the video? All right. Let's do this. Guys, that's your hint to come down.
talking to a microphone, I can't. You want to talk? Oh, okay. <laughs> Green light means go, so if you want to, now's your chance. No? Okay, that's okay. Well, man, this, this is uh, an exciting time and a stressful time. I know it was for me when I was graduating, but this is their opportunity to um, use the skills that they've learned through high school and college and allow them to apply them to their, to their careers and their goals and allow them to use these skills to reach other people for Christ. Um, just know that we as a church family, we're always here for you. And if you guys need anything, we're just a phone call, text away. Um, if you plan on going overseas or, or making long trips, just remember to, uh, to uh, send us pictures and make sure to keep us in touch. Um, we're praying for each and every one of you guys. And I would really encourage all of you guys before you leave today to come say hello, congratulate, congratulate them. See, I can't speak either. It's okay. <laughs> And so if you guys could just continue to pray for them and allow them and pray that God will bless their, um, bless their, their lives as they continue on through this point. I'm going to go ahead and pray us out, and then you guys will be excused. Dear God, thank you again for everything that you've done for us and sending your son to die for us and save us from our sins. I pray that you'll just continue to, to be with us as we uh, grow as a church, that we reach as many people for you as possible, that we will continue to do your will and doing what you would like us to do. I pray that you'll just be with each and every one of these people as they go out and, and, and start their new lives, that you will just continue to be with them as you have been and that you will just give them guidance in the way that you want them to go and that you're leading their journey. I pray that you'll just be with us as a church, that you will give us the wisdom to help encourage and motivate them I pray that you'll just continue once again to just bless us as a family. I pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen.